Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with Teresa Gary from the Stark County Community Action Agency. Love what we're learning here about uh, the employment and job preparation and um, just getting folks skilled with both the soft and the hard skills to mm-hmm. be able to get out there in the workforce. Mm-hmm. It was interesting. If, if we could pick up on something that you had said right before our break, um, some people might be displaced. If this person has worked at the same job for 30 years, mm-hmm. but they're not ready to stop working, mm-hmm. and they'd still like to maybe beef up the nest egg a mm-hmm. little bit before they truly do retire, retire. Mm-hmm. Uh, people have not done that resume in quite some time. And Absolutely. Resumes are not what they used to be. They are not. So tell us what your advice to someone in that position would be. How do you do a resume nowadays? Well, my first advice would be contact Stark County Community Action Agency uh, and let us help you to get there. Because, you know, what I'm finding is is it's different for different organizations and different employers. Um, You know, you might have a Fortune 500 company that loves to have a picture of that person, you know, looking for that job position, and they have all of these different skill sets. But you may have another organization that doesn't necessarily want that or doesn't um, care about that. They want to know what your history has been. Um, So I think it really just depends on what area you're actually looking in. Um, And that brings me to a point of we want to be job specific. We want to look at that resume and we want to say, okay, where are you going with this? You know, where do you want to what kind of job do you want to have? What type of skills do you want to acquire? And that's going to help us to prepare um, the resume for you or help you to prepare that resume. What information should be included there? Uh, And that's important because you don't want to include skills that are not the skills that someone would be looking for for a particular job. If you are a person who drives a truck, you're going to have that skill. You don't want to, you know, if you're if you're looking for a job that actually doesn't have driving in it, but this is all you've ever done, then what other skills have you acquired over time? Maybe it's customer service skills that we can highlight on that resume um, so that the job that you're looking for sees that you have that experience. Mm -hmm. So you just want to be mindful um, when doing that resume, and we can help you with that. Play to your strengths. Mm -hmm. What do you like? What Mm -hmm. are you good at? Mm -hmm. Let's go for that. Absolutely. Yes. That, it just makes so much sense. So you're helping everybody with the soft skill of landing a job mm-hmm. because there is a skill set required to getting a job in the first place. Absolutely. There's technique. What about interview technique? What does a person need to know when they go into interview for a so job? So when you're going to interview for a job, what things should you bring? You know, should you bring a notepad so that you can take down notes? We always suggest that. Um, we always suggest having, you know, additional resumes. Um Sometimes the interviewer hasn't had enough time to prepare to interview you, but you want to be prepared in that interview. Um, You definitely, when you go into an interview, you want to have questions prepared for the interviewer. Uh, You know, you're not just being interviewed, but you're interviewing the employer as well. You want to make sure that it's a right fit for you. Important Um, to remember that. You want to have have done some research about that organization so you know whether or not it's going to be an organization you actually want to work for. Uh, Those are all things that are important. Important when you know interviewing aside from you know what to wear how to have your hair um, you know how to how your nails should be groomed uh, what to say you know those are all things that we try to prepare you for going into an interview with an employer I love your idea of have some questions ready mm-hmm. Because so often at the end of an interview, they say, do you have any questions for me? And mm-hmm. too many people say, no, I'm no. good. I'm good. Right. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then you'll go home and cross your fingers. Yeah. And I think with the employer, what they're thinking is, are you really interested? Mm-hmm. Are you really interested in this organization if you haven't prepared any questions? Are you really interested in the role? So you definitely want to make sure you have something. If Even if the employer has pretty much answered all of your questions during the interview, there, there's got to be something out there that you didn't cover. And that's going to come from your research before you actually interview. Do you have a fallback question that you can always ask and not how soon do I get to go on vacation and how much does it pay? (laughs) Um, Fallback question is probably when do I get started? Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I think that that just shows optimism and it just shows that, hey, I'm ready to get started with you. Mm -hmm. I'm so interested that this sounds amazing and I just want to get started with you. Or what's the very first project you'd like to to get going on? Yes. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. That does sound uh, 
Because there's nothing wrong with showing that you want the job. Absolutely not. There's nothing wrong with that. And you need to make sure with with so many people looking for jobs anymore, you definitely want to stand out. So mm-hmm. um, I think that's a tip that you can take away. Stand out, especially in an interview. If you've landed the interview, you've got to stand out because you want to look better than anyone else coming in there for that job. One way to hedge your bets as far as landing an interview is to attend one of the many job fairs that take place. Do you all participate in those? Are there value in those? Do you really get hired out of those? You do get hired out of job fairs. Um, And I don't know how often you get hired out of job fairs, Mm -hmm. but I can speak to the job fairs that we've held as an organization. Uh, And we've had many individuals Um, get hired at different employers. We've kind of tracked that to see, you know, who's been interviewed because we work very closely with employers because of the nature of what we do. Uh, So we've been able to track to see, hey, did did folks coming through our programs, you know, they went through job readiness or they went through computer skills training and then, you know, they've made the connection with the employer and then the employer has interviewed them and, you know, may have gotten a job. So we definitely do track that So I know firsthand that you can get hired from a job fair. Uh, You you have to keep in mind that there are so many employers there sometimes and so little jobs to fill or maybe there's a specific um, a specific skill set that you'll need in order to get a particular job. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep all of those things in mind when you go to a job fair and when you're applying for different jobs at the job fair. I'm guessing if you decide to go that route, take some resumes, dress for the job you want, Mm -hmm. and be ready to interview right there on the spot, Mm -hmm. and any other advice other than those things? Well, you know, when you when you speak to an employer, you if it's if it's an employer that you're definitely interested in, you want to make sure that you make a lasting impression. So Mm -hmm. going up to that table, having conversation with the HR person, letting them know your skills, uh, maybe letting them know some education that you have to back your skills, um, shaking a hand, making eye contact being genuinely interested in the organization and the position that's there. But you got to come out of your shell and you got to talk. If you're not talking, if you're not shaking hands, if you're not really genuinely trying to uh, interact with some of those HR folks, then that's an opportunity missed. So you don't get in front of HR people very often unless you're actually being interviewed. So the job fair is an excellent way to do that because you have them right there in front of you and it's, you know, you don't have to wait to have that interaction. So you definitely want to make that lasting impression while you're there. So encouraging. And you're, you're telling us all the things we've been taught ever since we were young. Mm-hmm. And it's just good to brush up on that mm-hmm. if you are heading back out into the workforce. Some people might say, um, what about my age? If they are someone who worked for a long time at something and then they're wanting to make a switch. Mm-hmm. And I detect some kind of a little bit of contention out there between young people trying to get jobs mm-hmm. and trying to get that first job, mm-hmm. saying, come on, older people, you had your chance. <laughs> Can yeah. you move along mm-hmm. and make room for us? Mm-hmm. And the older people who are saying, I'm, not, I'm at the top of my game mm-hmm. and I'm not quite ready to be done yet. Mm-hmm. What do you see? Well, what I see is that... The world is changing so much for someone who believes they're at the top of their game. A lot of times they don't want to learn something different to -hmm. stay at the top of their game. Mm -hmm. And we are in such a world of technology and things shifting and changing that some of the younger folks have uh, a little bit more of an idea of where we're going. Um, So I would say that there's a balance if you're at the top of your game or if you're an individual who's been working in an area for a long period of time, you want to be open to change. And professional Uh, development. you got to be open to change. If you're not open to change, you're not going to survive. And they are going to hire that younger person Mm -hmm. to a younger person looking for that opportunity. I think that they do have a chance simply because we're shifting and we're moving in a different way and we communicate in a different way and they're learning that way to communicate. So with that being said, there are so many opportunities uh, out there for an individual just trying to land that opportunity um, that they'll probably get a chance to do that. Yes, that's because, good. you know, they they understand the language 
um, that that we're being taught. So just be open to change. And, and, and I think that young people, too, they can learn from um, the older generation. And I say that because a lot of uh, younger folks don't necessarily understand work ethic mm. and longevity. Um, and I think they can learn a lot from the older generation to say, you know, we worked someplace for 30 years. And even though that's not the case now, you really do need to stay someplace for a good three years to understand the culture, understand working, understand work ethic, understand how to communicate outside of tech speak um, and, you know, using email or using ways of communication that are not face to face. Um, which we lack, we are lacking now with more technology. Mm -hmm. So I love what you're saying, how it's an opportunity to learn from each other Mm -hmm. across the generations. Mm -hmm. And I've heard or read somewhere that in in any one workplace environment, we could have up to five generations for the first time in history working together. Yeah, that takes some navigating, doesn't it? It does. It does. And so, um, With that being said, you definitely need to um, using technology to communicate is not going to work. You definitely have to be open to communicating face to face, because I think when you send messages in an email, a lot of times people are confused by the email. They feel like you're saying something the wrong way um, when in essence you're really not saying it the wrong way. It may have come off a little direct um, and you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they said that in an email. And that's not essentially what they meant. So more interaction, face-to-face interaction, really being able to um, converse with people of all levels is really going to be key to any person younger older in between it's really the key to success in the in the workplace absolutely and yes as you say email doesn't give a tone of voice and people can read in their own tone mm-hmm. of voice and you can misread it completely absolutely. you hit the nail on the head there do you see Teresa, any trends as far as job opportunities that seem to be coming along is there any one field that pops up to you or or no It's going to be different for each county. Mm -hmm. In Stark County, uh, the oil and gas industry was an industry that we thought was just going to really take off. And I think we're we're circling back around (laughs) to that. Um, I think it kind of phased out for a minute, um, but I think we're coming back around to that. So I would be looking for that, obviously, in the near future. Mm -hmm. I would also uh, say that... um, The medical field is always going to be a field where um, you're going to need individuals. You're going to need people. So gaining some skill sets in the medical field will do you just wonders. Um, Technology is a big thing, but it all depends on what type of technology. Um, So you definitely have to do your research if you're a technologically inclined person, which I am not. (laughs) Um, But if you are one of those folks, uh, you definitely want to look into, you know, what's trending and what's um, going to be happening within the next five years. So those are some areas that I would definitely keep my eye on. Um, you know, the trades, the Hall of Fame uh, really has a big project going on right now. So I would definitely um, look into trades. I would definitely look into carpentry and you know, plumbing and pipe fitting and steel workers and things of that nature, because you have a really big open market for that in Stark County right now with the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. So So strike while the iron is hot. Absolutely. All right. And go to sccaa.org. That's the Stark County Community Action Agency. Teresa Geary, thank you so much for what you do in our community. Thank you so much for having me.